Color correction is the process of fixing or enhancing the color of a digital image. The process is done gradually, or by grades. The primary functions of color correction are to accurately reproduce what was shot by compensating for variations in the source material, like over or under exposure, or errors in white balance, or to establish a desired look that enhances or alters the mood of the scene. For the purposes of this workshop, we will concern ourselves only with the first function, accurately reproducing what was shot by manipulating focus exposure, dynamic range, and color balance. The two tools we'll be using the most in color correcting in Final Cut Pro 10 are the color board and the waveform monitor. First is the color board, which is accessed by selecting a clip in the timeline, and then opening the inspector, and then under color, click the right facing arrow next to where it says correction 1. The color board has three tabs along the top. The exposure tab has four pucks. The big puck affects the global exposure and will brighten or darken the exposure for the whole image. The black puck will brighten or darken the exposure for only the shadow areas. The gray puck, the midtones, and the white puck, the highlights. The saturation tab also has four pucks. The big puck affects the global saturation and will increase or decrease color saturation for the whole image. Again, the black, gray, and white pucks affect saturation for the shadows, midtones, and the highlights separately. The color tab also has the same four pucks for global, shadows, highlights, and midtones. But unlike the first two, these pucks can move left or right in addition to up or down. Basically, you drag your chosen puck over the color that you would like to add or subtract to your image. There's a line across the middle of the color board. If you drag your puck above this line, you are adding more of this color to your image. And if you drag your puck below this line, you are subtracting more of this color from your image. The waveform monitor shows us levels of luminance, or brightness, of the image in units called IREs. Zero IRE is the darkest black, and 100 IRE is the whitest white. So we have to work to keep our image's waveform between zero and 100. The waveform monitor is accessed by clicking the light switch icon at the top right corner of the viewer, and then clicking on show video scopes. Now over here, click on where it says settings, and then under display, click on waveform. And then once again, click on settings, and then under channels, for right now, go ahead and choose Luma. As you move from left to right on the waveform, you can see how from left to right, it also lines up with the image itself. In this example, you can see how this part near the bottom of the waveform corresponds to this gentleman's black shirt. Remember, lower on the IRE is black, higher on the IRE is white. So this low part is this man's black shirt. And similarly over here, this higher part on the graph corresponds to this gentleman's white shirt. Now click once more on settings, and then under channels, choose RGB parade. Now we see the same information, but instead this time it's broken out by individual red, green, and blue channels. We're going to end up using both of these waveform views in this workshop. The first step in color correction is to set your focus exposure. Exposure should be set based on the focal point of the image, for example, the interviewee in an interview. This gives your focal point priority in the overall image's exposure. First, select your clip in the timeline. Then, select the crop tool from the bottom left of the viewer and crop your image to a consistent patch of skin on your focal point. When you have your crop, click on Done. Now, open the waveform viewer and make sure that it's set to display Luma. And you'll see that you only have one trace and that trace corresponds to your cropped area. Now open up your color board, go to the exposure tab, and drag the global puck up or down until the trace reads at around 50 to 60 IRE. Then, click up here, and this will get you back to the inspector. Now down here, click on this arrow next to the word crop, and that will undo our crop. Now our overall picture's exposure has changed, but the exposure overall is centered around our focal point. Dynamic range is the range between the darkest and lightest areas, or the shadows and the highlights, that you have to work with, which for our purposes is the brightness levels between 0 IRE and 100 IRE. A related concept, contrast, is the visual difference between shadows and highlights. Basically, the darker your darks and the brighter your brights, the more apparent contrast you have, and the more your images pop. Bearing all of this in mind, we want to use as much of our dynamic range as possible to give us more contrast. 
So picking up from where we left off in the last lesson, open up your waveform monitor and your color board and make sure that your color board is open to the exposure tab. Now drag the shadows puck up or down until the lowest traces on your waveform monitor are just above zero IRE. Then drag the highlights puck up or down until the highest traces on the waveform monitor are just below 100 IRE. This may affect the shadows, and if it does, drag the shadows puck back up or down to compensate. So now, your dynamic range is using almost all brightness levels between 0 IRE and 100 IRE, and your image will have noticeably more contrast and pop than it did originally. Color balance is the process of correcting for color casts, ensuring that the overall image isn't dominated by a single color. This ensures that, basically, blacks stay black and whites stay white, and it keeps colors true to the way that they were originally shot. This example shot here could definitely use some color balancing, as it has a red-orange tint to it. A quick and easy way to get a good color balance is to white balance the image. Essentially, the color white is actually composed of equal parts of red, green, and blue in a digital image. So if we can correct our color so that it takes equal parts of red, green, and blue to make white, our image should be free of color casts. Now that may have actually sounded more complicated than it really is, but you're about to see it's actually pretty straightforward. So to do this, we're going to have to find something white in our image. And luckily, for this particular image, this gentleman is wearing a white shirt. So just like before in the focus exposure lesson, use the crop tool to crop to just a square of this gentleman's white shirt. Now let's reopen the waveform monitor and the color board. We're going to change the waveform monitor to display RGB parade, and we'll open the color board's color tab. Now, from our red, green, and blue traces, we can clearly see that there is more red than green or blue. We'll grab our highlight puck, and we'll drag it over here into the red area, and we'll start dragging down to subtract red from the image. Now, as you can see, the more red that we subtract, the more that the green and the blue adjust accordingly. Ah, but the green is increasing faster than the blue, which means that we don't quite have the hue of red correct. So we're going to drag the puck left and right to see how it affects our traces. Now as you can see, as we move more towards orange, we can see the green will start going back down. And that makes sense because orange and green are actually opposite colors. So basically, you see which color is giving you your cast, in our case red, and you start subtracting it. And then once you have the level about right, start moving the puck left to right so you finesse it until your red, your green, and your blue are all about even. There, that looks pretty good for us. Alright, so now we go back again to the inspector, and we'll undo our crop, and look at that. Our red color cast is now gone, and we have a very pleasing balanced image. So just to kind of show you what we're looking at overall here, here is the original image before we color corrected it. So it wasn't very well exposed, it didn't have a lot of contrast, and the color was just all wrong. And now that it's been color corrected, we have a very pleasing image with a lot of pop, and no color casts.